Hello everyone, we have our news for the week, so let's take a look. Maintenance is normal time as usual. Uh, this week is week two of Dark Lineage, which means we're getting three new units. So we're getting one free unit, one regular unit, and one cheap premium unit. So we're getting a login for the regular and the premium unit, 30 shards each, usual there. Uh, exchange shop, both units, including the premium unit shards, are in the uh, banner shop. We're getting some ability awakenings for Rain and Fina. So they're getting a boost to their passive, which is going to upgrade their uh, base limit burst. I believe it should be like a 300x modifier or so. Some extra passives there as well. Uh, they're getting their leader skill, which should be 100% attack and magic to JP anniversary units. LB fill, passive stats, chain mastery, and upgrading some of their abilities. I do believe uh, one of those is going to add 70x modifier to their LB. A couple of the other things didn't look any different on Global and JP, so we'll, they might be getting some bonus upgrades other than what JP got. We'll have to see. Unfortunately, they don't actually list any actual numbers here for me to know for sure, but should be a decent upgrade for them overall, actually, and make them really usable. So that's kind of nice, and obviously, with all the other units that got their upgrades, we'll have a Silver Crown a challenge fight for them. And they're adding some new leader skills. So Regina, Edgar, Axtar, Cleom, and Summoner Ridia are going to get the Ice category, 100% attack and magic. And Snow and Celeste will get the Ice category, uh, defense and spare, 100% added in. So it kind of looks like they're going by uh, elementals. Because this week uh, we're going to get Laswell, which is the Ice leader, essentially. So, new cards. Up first, we have the one from Laswell. So, he is premium, which means EX3 to get one copy of his card. 170 attack and magic. 80% attack and magic. 100% limit damage. And 500 flat attack and magic. All ice category units only. And then the other unit's going to be Roka. So, she's not premium. We get EX1 and EX3. Her card. Maxed out, 130 magic, 50% magic, 50% double hand magic, and 500 flat magic. It's an okay card overall. So that's it for new cards. We get Chapter 2 of Dark Lineage. So this is just like last time when we had Dark Reigns event. Each week is a new chapter. So just a little bit more story there. Uh, we'll have to see if they uh, mess up like they did with Chapter 1 and have some stuff already marked as cleared. Which, if they do, it's worth running through because if they reset everything, uh, I think, what, this last one was two at the end that weren't already marked cleared, so you could get an extra 200 lapis. So we have uh, the free unit. So our usual uh, event, farm through, get the unit, get all the stuff to fully max them out. Definitely worth going through, and that's going to be Reagan. So he's a super limit burst unit marked as a, an attacker. His super is a one-handed sword, 205 attack. He'll get 500 flat attack. And it's got uh, beast and dragon killer, 50% for everybody else. Regular trust, just a materia. 50% uh, demon killer and 50% uh, dual wield equipment attack. So not too bad there. And character bonuses. So just like all the other ones, you get extra drops to make farming a little bit quicker there. And we can take a look at his kit on the JP side. So he can pretty much imbue himself with every element and he's got a 30% amp tied to it. Mirror chain move with a 50x dot on it. And dots... That low don't really do that much overall. 150 isn't a huge modifier there. He's got a cooldown. We'll add 50x modifier to his limit. Then we got uh, Stardust Ray and Bolting. So he can be pretty much a chain partner for any melee. Decent amount of killers in his kit and everything. Some passives for both Sword and Greatsword. He's got both Dual Wield and Double Hand passives. 
mainly focused as a dual wield unit and his chain cap is not limited to dual wield only so you can build him either way if you want flat attack from using uh, trust or super is nice and his limit which is pretty much his main damage is obviously going to be his limit so base limit fire and ice down 120 80 percent defense break and 200x modifier which is okay and then his super is a 300x modifier with defense and spirit down 80 percent and 130 on the para and peril so with his cooldown, which you can use the turn before only, you can get his super up to a 350 modifier. And 24 hits should be triple mirror chaining. So overall, decent for a free unit, honestly. Especially because he can be imbue himself with pretty much any element you want. Looks like uh, dark would be what he doesn't have. wide uh, choice on his elements so definitely worth going through the event and uh, farming him up and then below that we have the shadows and dragon king shadows of the dragon king and war goddess so this is the silver crowns for uh, rain and fina so just like all the others we'll run through the hard version and see what we can do there so you'll be able to max out one of them for free And then for a new event, we're getting uh, a raid event. So against the Invincible. And we'll be able to get a one-handed gun, 180 attack, 230 magic on it, and 50% uh, beast and demon killer. Not that bad overall for a one-handed gun. I believe our best one right now is a 195 magic. At least ones that's not locked to Louise. So standard raid stuff there. Usual bonuses for all the anniversary units. And that's about it there. And then we have the actual banner. So both Laswell and Roka are there. And they're doing a special. You can get one of them guaranteed on the special step up here. So it looks like 26k to, to run through and you get either or guaranteed can run through that twice. And it's going to take 9 tickets if you want to pity Roka, 12 tickets if you want to pity Laswell. And then they have the standard uh, step up where you only get the 2 tickets in the middle there and the final step is free. So Laswell is a Brave Shift unit, true Brave Shift. So base is physical attacker, shift is magic attacker. So his super is light armor, 100 attack and magic, 43 defense, 14 spirit, 30% ice resist. Let's see, Laswell only will get 500 flat attack and magic. Everybody else... We'll get, uh, looks like 50% attack and magic equipment when either uh, dual wielding or double handing. So, fairly versatile on that. Regular Trust is a katana, 162 attack and magic. Just him will get the uh, 1500 flat attack and magic, which is really nice. Not stackable on that, though. And everybody else will get the dragon and insect killer by 50%. And he has our leader skill for ice or JP anniversary units. So he is kind of a cheaper unit. He's got 300% attack, defense, magic, and spirit for ice and anniversary. So while he does have higher defense and spirit, he's got lower attack and magic than the other elements overall for the premium units. And then we have Roka, who is a super limit burst unit. So her super two-handed gun, 242 attack, she'll get 500 flat, uh, 242 magic, she'll get 500 flat magic. And everybody else can get the 50% uh, fury and stone killer. Regular trust is clothing, 20 defense, 60 magic, 33 spirit. Uh, nullify stop and 30% mana and magic. So unless you need stop or the percentage on that, probably not something that's going to be used too much as we got better clothing uh, accessories. 
And we can take a look at both of them on the JP side. So first up, we have Roka. So for her, she has her usual uh, decreased cooldown timer for time magic. Magnus, you can't multicast this in the same turn. She's got five charges, but you'll have to take five different turns if you want to use it all up. She does get a 150 Earth uh, Magnus, which is good. Let's see, 140x finisher magic damage. Looks like we cannot imbue that at all. She does have a 40x physical attack with magic damage, so that is imbuable, and that's removing all buffs. So the removing buffs only is quite nice, bolting chain on that. So that could be handy. She's got a cooldown, 30% earth boost, 80x modifier to her limits, and a 300% magic store, so that's not too bad. Then we got lightning, ice, fire, chaos, wave, awaken, move, 150 modifier there. She has an on-demand earth field, though, which is really nice. This isn't a cooldown or anything. 40%. Both quad and triple cast. LB, uh, she's got a 200x modifier to probably her earth magic spells there. Double hand passives. And she's got the usual earth. So quake, chaos wave, and bolting for all earth regular spells. And as far as limit. So base, 30% gun resist down, 130 earth resist down, 200x modifier, three hits. So got to weave that into an actual chain. And the super version is 35 gun down, 130 earth, and 330 on the modifier. And she adds in 80. So we're looking at 410 fully maxed out modifier with a 300% magic boost. So not bad overall. So she'll do a decent amount of damage. I mean, she's not overpowered or anything, I don't think. And then we have Laswell. So in his base, we have the 150 Ice Magnus. Let's see, Awaken plus two. That might not be something that we're getting right away. 250X Mirror Chaining. 170 Bolting Chain, 150 Stardust Ray. So he's got a decent amount of uh, chain choices, the pretty much big ones for melee chaining. Remove all buffs, so he should have a perfect dispel as well, which is nice. Cooldown, so 30 Ice Boost, and 180x modifier to his limit is nice. Magnus to fill and give him some buffs. All right, so he's got a little bit, everybody has the fill. He's got a little bit extra on that. So he does have premium unit. So that means EX2, he's got 200% kill at everything. He can be a dual wield or a double hand unit with his passives. He's got the full chain cap that's not locked to dual wield. And he's got the 100x LB modifier built into his kit, which is super nice. Base limit, we got 35% katana down, 130 ice down, and 270 hit 24. So that should be triple mirror chaining. So the 180 should go on top of the uh, 270. So he'll have a decent LB if you use the cooldown. Another nice thing is that is five turns, which means you can ta uh, stack Tyvus' Spirit on top of that as well. Plus, he has the 100 uh, for the first five turns in the kit. And then in the shift, he still has his 150 Ice Magnus. We got Bolting, Chaos Wave Awaken, both imbuable attacks. Let's see, he's got a physical cover for one turn. Only 20% mitigation. And then he's got, he's actually got Freeze and Tornado in a kit that aren't spells for chain moves. So his caster side has decent amount of choices for chaining as well. 
elemental wise he's pretty much limited to wind and ice it looks like aside from the two that we can imbue and then he's got a cooldown to boost his limit so we get 160 modifier for his magic side lb with a 30 uh, 300 magic boost And his shifted is 40% gun down, 130 ice down, and 320 ice magic. So it's magic damage, which means the 100, 100x modifier in his base form will not affect the shift at all. Also not viewable. So he'll have the 320 plus just what his cooldown is. So 480 with the 300% store. Still a decent modifier. Overall, not too bad. And he is the big ice leader that I know of. I'm not sure of anybody that has higher than 300% attack and magic for ice units at the moment. So as far as pulling, if you are limited resources, remember at the end of uh, Dark Lineage, we do get Scarlet Rain, who is a fire and FFBE leader. So the FFBE part of that is really big, and he's got 500% attack and magic. So anybody with uh, limited resources should probably save up for him if you haven't already spent everything for Deoxys. As far as myself, I'm going to be using EX tickets uh, this week. We'll see if anything uh, shows up. Anybody that does decide to pull, though, good luck to you. We're going to end this video here. Hope everybody enjoyed.